Welcome back. All right, uh, I want to talk today about Matthew or Maddie Veneers. You can say it however you'd like. Um, it, it sounds like, you know, Matthew Veneers was how everybody was referring to it, and now that he's getting closer to the draft, we're all going to be calling him Maddie. Either way, fascinating prospect in that I'm wearing Seattle gear because he probably goes second overall. There's an argument to be made about whether or not Seattle picks. I've, I've seen people say maybe they should trade down. It's not necessarily a great draft class. Here's the thing. Beneers is six foot one, 185 centimeters, 174 pounds, 79 kilos. Now, 18 years of age, and he already looks like he's going to be a leader in the NHL. Now, it's, it's really a matter of, is that elite level offensive skill there? That seems to be the big question mark. What kind of elite offensive skill is there? Or are we looking at a guy who may develop into a Pajot type? And hey, Jean-Gabriel Pajot right now is showing the Islanders why he was a smart pickup, as he did last year as well. So right now, Beneers is number three in the consolidated rankings on elite prospects. But elite prospects has him at number one. Now, NHL Central Scouting has him at number six among North American skaters. So yeah, that's the, that's the incredible... Um, unpredictability of this year's draft again not as much uh, of a body of work of a lot of these players but we saw a lot of veneers so playing for michigan who really again have, have started to build quite the program 24 games 10 goals 14 assists 24 points again college hockey to see a guy come in at 18 years of age and put up those kinds of points pretty impressive uh, now, he also played at the World Championship, which just concluded, uh, playing for Team USA. And in six games, he had one goal and one assist for a team that won bronze. So he's shown that he can play with men. He has shown that he is he is right there and he's able to do it. Didn't play every game in the tournament, but he still played six games and he still did get a goal. So the, the talent is there. Uh, according to Hockey Prospect, uh, he's the most complete player in the draft. They see him as being the absolute most complete player, player in the draft. They're very high on him, really are. Um, and they say he's always involved. And that the sum of his parts, the the offensive side of it, there may be some, some issues with maybe he doesn't have the greatest shot. Maybe he's not the most explosive offensive player. But you add it all together, he's better than the sum of his parts. He overachieves. And, and that's kind of been the, the standard. Uh, elite level skating, great edge work. Uh, so while if you look at his strengths, you'll see teamwork, passing, speed, puck handling, leadership, acceleration, all around the same. So again, it's you're, you're getting a guy who's really, really good at everything. Not necessarily absolutely fantastic lights out at any one area of the game. Although they do say that defensively, he's pretty solid. So the offensive end of the ace, he's pretty good but it doesn't detract from his defense at all and that it may be more enticing to a gm picking him up with the idea that he could be uh, a great two-way center a fantastic two-way i guess you could use bergeron as the example if you want but that's putting a little bit of pressure on the kid isn't it i don't like to use the the comparisons because to me every player is his own player um you can say he's sort of like, you know, player A, player B, player C. But in, in the end, they're all their own player, right? So the defensive side of it has them leading to believe that he may be a shutdown center who can drive the play as well. So again, it, that to me sounds like Pajot. It it sounds like uh, William Carlson in Vegas. Um, Bo Horvat in Vancouver kind of thing too, where, you know, he can be a shutdown center, but he can drive the play as well. That's tantalizing for a team that's coming into the league. For Seattle, they, they're they not going to be going into this blind. Uh, Ron, Ron Francis isn't going to this with the idea that, hey, they're going to be fantastic out of the gate, right? Having a guy like Beneers who can come in and play in the NHL as soon as he's done with his commitment to Michigan, right? So, and he doesn't have to come in right away. It really isn't a big deal. Uh, but a guy who can come in and play for your team when he's ready, who can be that defensive center who can also drive the play keep the puck out of your net and, and help to keep the puck at their end you're going to need those players and a guy like Beneers a center who can drive the play like that it's rare that that they're available via trade and so if you can pick him up in the draft you should probably get him in the draft so I, I would I still think he ends up going second 
and a lot of mock drafts have him going to Seattle at number two. Um, seen as having a high hockey IQ that he can see the play, he can adjust very quickly to what's going on on the ice. He has no problem with seeing all around him on the ice and, and making those changes. So if he's coming out of his own zone and his plan is, I'm going to pass it here, that is cut off. He can then see exactly where to go next. He doesn't get crossed up, less likely to, to have the giveaways as part of his uh, uh, track record in the National Hockey League. So he's seen as having a really high floor. And when I talk about prospects, uh, there are going to be the ones I talk about having a high floor. And what that means is prospects are, are ranked by scouts as not likely to miss. So let's say that Beneers falls apart. The high floor means that if he falls apart, the offense may never reach that elite level. But defensively, he's a good player. He will be a useful, at the very worst, probably third line center. And that's at the very worst third line center and the National Hockey League. The offensive ceiling, that's where the question is. The question is, what is he going to be able to do offensively? How much is there and, and what's going to happen? So uh, he's a fascinating prospect and he's near the top of the list because yes, this draft is very unpredictable. Uh, in a regular, like if it was last year's draft, which was considered very deep, would he have been top five? It's a valid question. But we can only go by the draft class uh, as we go through it each year. And honestly, to me, it sounds like the kind of guy that if I'm Ron Francis, I want him in my organization. Absolutely. The competitiveness, the fact that he's able to play against men already, the fact that he's, you know, played on big stages internationally and he hasn't looked out of place. A lot of reasons to look at him and say this could be a fascinating prospect to start out with. And then you look in other rounds of the draft for uh, for those, those gems, those guys that maybe fell through the cracks that other teams were looking at. Seattle has been very, very um, strong in terms of, of getting that scouting staff together and, and both pro and amateur scouting have been key already for a team that doesn't have players. They have one player at this time that I'm recording this. And so they, they've been doing a lot of scouting. I would think Beneers would be the guy they'd pick. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Where does Matty Beneers go in this draft? Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I'll talk to you again soon.